All right, let's talk about the difference between node lists and HTML collections. They're two very similar structures. They're groups of things on your web page. And depending on which method you're using, you could be getting a node list or you could be getting an HTML collection. And it's important to understand what the difference is between them and why you would want to use one versus the other. So as an example, the method query selector all. This is a method that exists on the document object, it exists on the parent node object, it exists on every element object, and on a document fragment. So on any of those four objects, you can call query selector all. This method returns, as you can see I've got highlighted here, a node list. If I was using something like get elements by tag name, this is going to return an HTML collection. So they are two different things, and I'm going to try to explain the, the differences and how it affects what you're doing in your JavaScript. First of all, HTML collection is elements only, so it's only element nodes. A node list is any kind of node, so it could include text nodes and element nodes. In theory, it could include comments, document nodes, document type nodes, document fragment nodes, all those different kinds, in theory. So that's the first big difference. Node list is any kind of node, and HTML collection is elements only. The other difference is that an HTML collection is considered live. That means if you are in the process of updating your web page and you have a variable that's holding an HTML collection. Let's say you've done get elements by tag name or get elements by class name and you have a group of elements inside of your variable and then you make changes to your page and you add a few more elements that would match the tag that was passed into this method or you've removed a couple of elements. Well, the contents of your variable will have changed. That's what it means by a live HTML collection. Node lists are typically static. It means it will go and fetch, this method will go and fetch the nodes that match whatever selector you put inside you here, but if you update the page, it doesn't update the contents of your variable. Typically this is not, uh, not done because the process of running query selector all and matching against a CSS selector or a complex CSS selector can be a very expensive process. So query selector all will return a static list most of the time. There is a method called child nodes, or sorry, a property called child nodes, and another property called children. And that's the ones that I want to talk about right now. So I have a web page here. Pretty, st uh, pretty standard chunk of HTML, and I have some pre-written script here. We're going to make some changes to it, but to save some time, I've written some script. Uh, skipping past some variable declarations here to this one, I've defined the common node types 1, 3, 8, 9, 10, and 11, 1 being an element node, 3 being a text node, 8's comment. Um, I'm going to do three loops here, main.children, and main was my variable that I declared up here. This is my main element on the page. I give it the ID main. Uh, I will leave all of this code in a code gist, and I'll put the link into the comments for this video so you can follow along. So main.children. Children returns an HTML collection. So it's live, and it's elements only. That's what children does. I'm finding out the length of this, and I'm running a loop, and I'm getting the node type of each one. So node type will tell you which of these numbers it is. Now, because children is elements only, and it's an HTML collection, it means that the node types should always come back as one. So I'm getting that number and I'm using it as a reference inside of this variable here. So it should write out element each time it loops. Second one, child nodes. This returns nodes and this one is a node list. 
but this is the one exception for node list where this is also live. A node list generated by the child nodes property will be live. If I use query selector all, that is going to be a static node list. This one is a live node list. So I'm going to loop through again and write out which loop I'm going through and then what the different types are. And then we've got a loop right here where I'm going to loop through everything that's inside of the document object. So we've got the main element and we're doing children and child nodes and then I'm going to do the child nodes of the document object. So let's come up here and take a look quickly before we run this script. Inside of main there is a section, another section, a comment, and then there will be a text node here where there's a carriage return after this, a carriage return after this, after this, and after this. So we've got a bunch of text nodes. We have a couple of element nodes. We have a comment node. And then my other piece of code right here, these four lines, I'm creating a document fragment. I'm creating a text node. I'm putting the text node inside the document fragment and then the document fragment inside of main. And I'm doing that before my loops just to demonstrate the fact that the text node will show up when I loop through the node list, but my document fragment doesn't. It is just temporarily there while the contents of the document fragment are put onto the page. So these two, fine, and then the document, this loop, the document object, if I close all this, this is the document. When I loop through the child nodes of the document, I'm going to be getting the doc type, I'm going to be getting this comment, and I'm going to be getting the HTML element. Those are the children of the document, or the child nodes, rather, of the document. So I'll save this. I will jump back over to here, and I will refresh my page. Uh, main not defined. Oh, I probably put something in the wrong order when I was moving my code around. Uh, what line was that on? Line 31. Yes, right here. So we're going to put main first. The order of your declarations is very important in JavaScript. Okay, here we go. So, children. Main.children. There's two of them. They're both elements. So those are the two sections. The first section having the five paragraphs, the second one having four paragraphs. And that's all there is. Children is live, so if I did update it before doing the loop, I would see the, um, the extra ones here or the reduced number here. Looping through child notes. So zero, uh, uh, the first one is text. Inside of main, there was a carriage return right at the very beginning. And then I had the heading element, and then a carriage return, and then a section, and then a carriage return. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, I started inside of main, so the heading wasn't inside of there. So carriage return, first section, carriage return, second section, carriage return, and then the comment, and then a carriage return, and then this last one. This is the one that we added. So if I jump back into here, the document fragment with the text node, a text node, which is right here. This is this final one right here. I don't get a document fragment. I only get the text. So when looping through here, I will get text. I will get elements. I will get comments. But I'm not ever going to run into document fragments. So you can see the difference between these two really comes down to if you want elements or if you want all the kinds of nodes. And if you're talking about all the kinds of nodes, just be aware that you have to deal with that in your code. The last loop, the third loop, was child nodes of the document object. So every time in your code you're writing document dot something. We're looking at all the child nodes. The doc type was the first one, then the comment, and then the HTML element. Those are the three pieces that we have. So when I collapse this, the doc type, the comment, the HTML, this is what the document object is. These are the three children of the document object. 
I added these two comments here, these two lines. I'm not doing anything with them, but I just wanted to draw your attention to them. The main element, right here inside the body, and every other element on the page has a property called owner document. This will be the document object. This line right here is the exact same thing as just writing the word document, but you can from any node find out what the owner document is for that element. If you ever run into a situation where you're dealing with multiple documents, you can use this to figure it out. And then document.documentElement, that is the HTML element. And we have one other that you will do sometimes, and that is document.body. And this is the body element. There's also a document.head if you ever need that. All right, uh, document the different types. Now, I didn't write down here the different node list. These are the methods that will return a node list, first of all. So document query selector all. That will return a node list. If we do uh, document dot body dot child nodes, that property will give you a node list. If we're talking about HTML collections, then we're talking about get elements by class name, get elements by tag name. got to put something inside of here. These won't return anything, but I don't want JavaScript errors to happen on the page. Uh, get elements by class name, by tag name, by tag name namespace. Not one that's used very often, but if you have um, a namespace in front of any of your tags, you can use tag name namespace to target specific elements on your page. I'll have another video talking about namespaces within your HTML, within your XML. That'll be a discussion for another time. And then children. That is the property that will return an HTML collection. So these are the difference between node list and collections. These are the method and property that you can use for node list, the methods and the property you can use for HTML collections. These properties down here at the bottom are not going to return a node list or a collection. They're dealing with individual nodes or elements. I just wanted to draw attention to it at this point because we are talking about node lists and collections. So that means we're talking about node nodes versus element nodes. First child, last child, next sibling, previous sibling, all of these are going to return a node. First element child, first element child, Oh, sorry, that should be last element child, next element sibling, previous element sibling. These will give you back an element. And this is only important when you are dealing with situations like this, where, oh, inside my section, I want the five paragraphs. Do you want to have to contend with the spaces that come after? So the carriage return that's in between the angle bracket at the end of the opening section tag and the angle bracket at the beginning of the paragraph tag. If you are aware that those carriage returns, that those text nodes exist, you can use these. First child of main is going to be this carriage return. First element child is going to be the section tag. So. Just be aware that there is a difference between the two of them, between elements and element nodes, and what these are going to return. Whenever you're in doubt, it's always a great idea. Go into MDN, look at the method that you're going to use, and see what it's going to return. Is it going to return a node list? Is it going to return an HTML collection? Is it returning a node, or is it returning an element? Once you're comfortable with those four things, you'll be able to write your JavaScript and not have to worry about it anymore. Great. So. As always, any questions, please leave them in the comments, and thanks for watching.